my carp fishing is all about short nights. I've always had a busy job, two kids, missus, not a lot of spare time really. And um, obviously I want to spend time with them. So the fishing is fitted in around that. I guess my style was probably adapted because of that over the you know 15 years I've been seriously carp fishing. So recently I changed, changed job, had a bit of a lifestyle change. Um, managed to get a job within Corda. You know, I've been a sponsored angler for years and um, an opportunity come up and couldn't, couldn't pass it up. It's a serious role, like it's been a lot to learn. You know, I deal with the import and exports of, of all the kit, the containers, the shipping documents, or the guys in the warehouse, that type of thing. But you know, it's a standard nine to five, like everyone else, you know, you've got to go to work, you've got to go and earn the money for a few mortgages and whatnot. So um, I still just, you know, still just fish and overnight if I can. A lot of, lot of what I do is about, you know, getting out and getting fishing as quietly and as stealthily as possible. There's a lot of stuff I do that maybe isn't the norm that, that really helps me, I think, like really light leads, use sub braid to try and like, you know, find the spots with your fishing rods, minimal disturbance. Yeah, long rigs, I know I'm always fishing. Lots of things like that I do to try and help me put, the, put it in my favour for when I, you know, do get down to the lake and then, and have my bit of time down there. Really, I'm there to look and take in you know, all the information that the lake's offering, trying to piece that all together to culminate in hopefully a period of angling that I can then capitalise on. And um, yeah, that's sort of usually how I've managed to get a little bit of success. Oh, check this lovely 31 pound mirror out. It's the best of three I've had in a quick night. Yeah, absolutely great overnight. So I've got to um, we'll get packed up now and get to work. Got a meeting today. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get him back, get wrapped up and get off. I really like to sort of target individual fish. And I mean, that, that's developed over years now. You know, you know, it's like you join the lake it's got a good stock, there's a big one in it. Everyone wants to catch it, you know, you get lucky enough. And that buzz of having that particular carp has always outweighed a lot for me. So, you know, as time's gone on, you, you see pictures and like a lot of people, there's, there's particular fish that just stand out that you just really want, you know, not even to have in your album, but you just want to catch them. Like, so once I've got a lake or a fish in mind and then obviously you find out how to get the ticket and, uh, you know, it's usually been somewhere I've sort of thought about for years, you know, you sort of work through them and such, but have fish in mind, have pictures of fish on your phone that you look at and, you know, you almost know quite a lot about it without even trying before you get there. It's always handy to know if a fish favours a certain area or uh, certain times of the year, because you can, you can really build your sessions around that. So those first few trips, really, I'm more going there to get my eyes on the place, see what's what, see who's fishing where, see where the fish are showing. You know, try and just try and get a feel for the place and take in as much information as I can. I do often walk, try and walk the lake before work. I mean, this is, this comes into my decision making when I'm picking a lake. You know, if I can pick a lake that I can almost detour, sometimes a long detour, but still make it en route to work, it really really helps. I think. You know, I'll uh, set my alarm an hour or two early, depending on how much the detour is, but. You know, it, it's not great when that alarm's going off. And I must admit, you know, there's a few times you, you snooze and you think, no, not today. But when I do get down there, what you can see actually just walk, walking around the lake and for you behind rods, you don't, you can't always see every angle. Like just going down for, for an hour or so before work, a couple of times a week, I think it gives you such an edge. Like when you see something that you know no one else has seen and that leads you to a spot or an area you know, to fish, I, I, you know, a lot, a lot of results I think have come from doing that. Um, yeah, and it's something like I sort of quite rely on in my fishing, you know, like look at being there, looking at the lake, seeing what's what, and seeing it at first light. Like when you, when you leave, when you leave work and, you know, get down the lake at five, six o'clock or whatever, you know, they're not really showing then. 
they're, they're not feeding, they're sat in weed beds, you know, it's all good and well finding them there, but that's not where they're feeding. So you want to find them at the times you are looking to get a bite. So, um, yeah, I put a big emphasis on, on doing that and, and trying to get around there as, as often as possible. So when I, you know, when I start a lake, I mean, I pretty much avoid the going swims. Don't get me wrong, like, on some occasions it can, it can, it can be the one and whether you like it or not, you've got to sort of get in the mix. But really, I'm always kind of looking for those, you know, there's like lesser fished areas. You know, I want to, I want to be able to get in a swim, potentially catch one, potentially get back on it, get a bit of baiting if I can. If I'm, if I'm sort of walking a lake and I see one in a swim that I know people aren't fishing, I'm, I'm rubbing my hands together because I'm thinking, oh yeah, here we go. Like, you know, it's no good seeing one in a swim that's getting rotated. It's, it's not doing anything for me. I'm not likely to get in there. Like Spot-wise, when I'm fishing, really, it's wherever the fish are feeding. If I haven't seen anything, and I'm, I'll look for a bit of clean ground. Like I think the firm and the drop just always seems to do it. But if they're feeding the deep, you know, in a dirty seal, I'm fishing it. Like I've got not a problem. I just want to be where those carp are and where they are at feeding time, and you know, hopefully where they are when other people aren't necessarily seeing them. Baiting up wise, like I really want to get it in three days. I don't want to be there any any sooner than that. You know, three days prior to when I'm going to fish. I don't bait unless I'm absolutely certain it's the right area, the right thing to do. But um, yeah, three days prior, then I fish, and then ideally, if the lake's not busy and I'm not affecting anyone's fishing, I'll bait when I leave. You know, I use hemp and boilies a lot. I feel like the hemp keeps them grabbing for a lot longer than, you know, the boilies. If you put a kilo or two of boilies in, I feel like I can go through that in no time. Kind of hoping it takes them three or four days to get through it so uh yeah that's why i use the hemp and boilies the boilies are there really so once they they're eating those as well as the hemp when i turn up to fish you know i fish again just plop out of a light lead handful of boilies around it they're used to finding them and i feel like you get quite quick bites like that sort of sometimes even on really tricky lakes you know you get rods out in the evening and then within a few hours you've had a bite sort of flick out throw a few baits around it and um, they're just used to finding that. I, I hope to, you know, I'd like to think they've been there grabbing for the last three or four days and then um, gone off to whatever they do in the daytime and then at night when it's feeding time, they, uh, yeah, they come back and all that's left is like, you know, 20, 30 baits and a, a couple of hook baits. So I feel like it gives me a great opportunity to get a bite on lakes that maybe you shouldn't get a bite so quick. You know, if you're fishing over a lot of bait, there's a lot to get through um, and yeah, that's a lot of what, what helps me, I think, get a little bit of success when I do. Alright, I got down after work, see a few fish showing and I've got three, three rods right in amongst them, they're scattering the boilies, choddies over the top of them with light leads and uh, yeah, quick bite. This is a uh, this is the result of fishing as stealthy as I possibly can. I've only been fishing for a couple of hours. Um, yeah, I'm made up with him. It's been a tough spring. Yeah, so hopefully there's more on the cards and hopefully I haven't disturbed them too much. I'm gonna let him go. Oh. Yeah, that's a proper result. I'm well pleased with that. A lot of the time, you kind of know, I think liners, bubbling and seeing what you see, you know if the fish are on the spot. You know, on the odd occasion, it's only very rarely where I've had quite a few fish off an area and then the bites are dried up and you sort of, you know, it's your leg core and your lead a little bit starting to smell and stuff. And I think that's the time then, you know, that area's done. They've Too many have been caught off it and it's time to move on. Time to get back around the lake, fish for what you see again and wait for another window of opportunity. Because I do the short nights, like stealth for me has to be at the forefront of my fishing. You know, there's no doubt, five, six, four ounce lead, whatever, you know, sure that is gonna hook, hook you more carp maybe, I'm not sure, but for me, it's no good me spooking the fish and they're not gonna come back until, and I've gone. So I really, you know, I really need to get out as stealthily and as quietly as possible. And I will use the smallest lead that will get me to the spot. Not like the time that's, you know, an ounce, an ounce and a half, 
I don't think, I personally, I'm sure people disagree, but I don't think that the, the lead, especially if it's an helicopter style with the bead up, is hooking the fish. I think, with, you know, with Devis Kamakura hooks and once they take that, that bait in their mouth, I think when they're trying to eject it is when they get hooked and then almost I think it helps you with a light lead. They start to, you know, move away. They haven't got anything to use to shake off. I think they're in a world of trouble and then they just bolt and, you know, absolutely screaming takes. And, and for me, yeah, just getting out, like the hardest fish to catch are the fish that know they're being fished for. So I want to get out as quietly and as stealthily as possible. And um, like boily fishing is, that is why I boily fish. And I think that really lends itself to my, my sort of approach, my style, my time. You know, and the baiting up, it, it, all, it all works together. Like, I don't think the baiting up would be as effective if I sat on it for two or three days, you know? Baiting up, night on it, leave, bait again. They're getting to feed on it freely more often than they're not. And then I'm hoping, you know, once I get there, they're super confident on the area. You know, if I was fishing, say, two, three nights a week on the zone, I, I think I'd kill it before it started. Obviously, which comes with the stealth and, you know, the short time. I try to travel as light as possible. Like, barely got anything with me, you know. Tank for a cup of tea, bit of bait, rucksack, little brolly, you know, mats over on the barrow. Like, for me, I want to spend more time walking, looking, not worrying about lugging a load of gear around. Like, if I need to move, I'll move. I fish braided mainline straight through. It really helps. Like, I don't, I don't bring a marker, spod rod. You know, it's I can find those spots with my fishing rod. Like today, we've turned up. It's, you know, we shot up and uh, literally had a lead about, light lead with my braided fishing rod. Bang, got the clip, wrapped it up. You know, whacked a rig on. When you're out there fishing, like. I don't need to be like spodding, spamming, wrapping this rod, marker rods. I don't, don't need to know the depth. You can feel that through the braid. You feel everything through the braid. You know, I think it'd be so accurate that, that when you fish that sub braid that you are bang on where you want it to be on. Like there's nothing worse than thinking, was that the spot? Like you want to know that's the spot. And, and fishing with the braid, you really do. Obviously it's extremely tough. Like I don't want to lose anything, you know. Fishing for the sort of fish I fish for, the lakes I fish, like I need to fish strong, fish reliable. Um, I want to land everything I hook. It may sound a bit extreme, but really like, it feels like that. I really need to be getting everything in and you know, I can't be, can't be losing fish. And yeah, that, that braid does it for me. Rig wise, basically all I've got to consider is, is it clean enough to fish a bottom bait? or do I need to fish a pop-up? Like, if I can, I'll fish on the deck. I feel like they've been hammered over the last however many years on pop-ups. And um, yeah, I think, I think it's a real edge to fish on the deck and the results have shown me that, like the fish I've caught and you know, I was lucky enough to catch a mid 40 common back last, last summer. I recently had the target I was hoping to catch and uh, I was 43 pound mirror, both nailed on the same D rig and caught loads between and barely lost any, like from quite savage battles and stuff as well. So I've got like really, you know, super confident in that rig now. Shoes it about nine, 10 inches, IQ2, size six, Kamakura X, wide gape, and just a D, but I do slight, something slightly different. Just put a bit of silicon up, up the back of the shank, just extends that D. Like when I sort of see it sat in the water and fish like a, a sort of, a weight out of wafter. So it kind of sits, does sink, does kick out, but sits pretty flat and it seems to sit at the top of that D. And I think as the, the bait's picked up, that hook just looks prime to be in exactly where you'd want it to be if it was going into a fish's mouth. And like I say, they've all been nailed and like, yeah, absolutely carnage battles on the braid and, and whatnot. So yeah, I've got the utmost faith in that. Like I say, if it's not clean enough and I need to fish a pop-up, yeah, I fish a hinge if I'm sort of trying to drop it drop it in a little hole or whatever. And if I'm fishing over light weed, I'm more than happy to fish a choddy and you can literally get out with the, the most minimal of fuss. So I do I do use that a lot. So yeah, that's all I really have to worry about rig wise is what's the bottom like, you know, and then I'll just pick one of the one of the two or three accordingly. Basically all the things I've been sort of saying has, has all sort of come into fruition on here. Finding them, light leads, D-rigs and uh, yeah, 
such a cool car, massive mouth, which I really, really like the, you know, like the look of for a long time. So um, yeah, it's moments like that really. It's everything for me. Like that, that is why I do it. That's why I put all this time and effort into it. You know, take time away from my family for like for those for those moments, and that's what I'm always sort of striving for and looking for. Like, and when they do come round, it's just it's magic.